Now we do have some new hardware information coming from Intel. We've been waiting for these GPUs. It's been a bumpy ride. When we first looked at the Intel GPUs, I was like, man, these are gonna look pretty good. We're, we're seeing large you know, memory buses, which is what you want for mining, by the way, for the uninitiated at pretty cheap prices and you know, pretty low power consumption because their core technology is not up there with like, you know, Nvidia and Radeon, which is actually not a terrible thing when we're discussing cryptocurrency mining because all we really want is low power consumption with really good memory performance at least a majority of the time, right? There are outlying lying cases like, for example, what we just talked about on SRB with uh, heavy hash being a little bit more core heavy. And so there, there is a little bit of nuance to that. And it will depend, of course, post-merge Ethereum, which coin decides to hit that price discovery. Maybe it is a core intensive algorithm, but for the most part, most of the cryptocurrencies are gonna be pretty hefty on memory. And if they are core intensive, it's really just adding core on top of the memory, except for a few outliers, like we said here, Caspa, these these heavy hash algorithms and of course there's another coin called alpha uh, alifium those are a couple outliers so that being said we have more information on intel and intel officially unveils the arc a750 limited edition graphics card performance benchmarks up to 17 percent faster than nvidia geforce rtx 3060 at 1440p. Intel has finally shared its official performance benchmarks of the high-end ARC A750 graphics card based on the Alchemist GPU architecture. The Intel ARC limited edition graphics card was teased by the blue team in early Q2 of 2022 when they announced their Alchemist GPU lineup along with the mobility variants. Since then, the ARC lineup has only launched in certain markets, first rolling out in entry-level laptop solutions and now rolling out in higher-end laptops. The desktop lineup has only seen one variant that's available for retail, and that is the ARC A380, which is not offered by, the, by Intel themselves as a reference variant, but a custom design by AIC Gunner. Now Intel has started to share performance numbers and information regarding its high-end Arc Alchemist GPUs too. The first of these designs is the Intel Arc A750 Limited Edition, which was also teased back at IEM 2022. The performance benchmarks shared by Intel include five games, which include F1 2021, Cyberpunk 2077, Control, Borderlands 3, and Fortnite. That's a pretty good lineup. You get a little bit of a mix of everything from you know your esports with Fortnite to pretty hefty demanding Cyberpunk 2077. It's interesting that they would even dare touch Cyberpunk 2077 but you know uh, that's not a bad that's not a bad sign it's a good sign that they are touching it in these benchmarks all of these games were tested at 1440p that's an interesting choice in resolution as well too it's one of the more popular resolutions for pc gamers right now uh, for those who are unaware a lot of people have upgraded to those 1440p monitors are getting more popular so hitting that market's really not a bad idea Um, and then I think we are back. So not sure why we had a blip in the internet connection there, but you know, it is what it is. This is the, the life of a, <laughs> a YouTuber, especially when we're talking about doing live streams, we're just going to run into some issues like that. We we've been studying the, this week, but I'm having issues at the farm with internet as well, too. We've been down two days, uh, one day for over eight hours at the farm. So what was really interesting here, and I think where we left off, because I do see the comment about Cyberpunk 2077, so we're aware of the games. All of these games were tested at 1440p. I was saying 1440p is a pretty good target, I think, for these. And the RK750 graphics card was compared against the GeForce RTX 3060, which it beat by delivering up to 17% performance. That's a pretty big deal. And that is, you know, pretty much across the board outside of Fortnite, where I think the 3060 looks to be outperforming it or not outperforming it, but not out. It's close enough, right? Within margin of error, probably at that point, that's 6%, six percent, six. Yeah. So up to 15%, it's really up to 17%. If you look at F1 2021. So 
the performance demo in in Cyberpunk 2077 is here. As you can see in the disclaimers below, both graphics cards were tested on the same system configuration comprising of an i9-12900K CPU and the latest Windows 11 version. In terms of drivers, the 3060 uses the 516.40 version, while the ARC 750 used an engineering driver. You can also see more detailed performance breakdowns in FPS is uh, in the slide below. And you can see here, Borderlands 3 was hitting 76.4, uh, basically 76 frames per second, while on the 3060, it was hitting 67. On Control, it was hitting 64 frames per second, while on the 3060, it was hitting 56 frames per second. It's pretty interesting because even on Cyberpunk, it's at 59.88, almost 60 frames per second at 1440p versus the 3060, which is at 52 frames per second. That is pretty incredible news, I think, when we're taking a look at this this performance, especially considering this is an engineering sample uh, on, of course, uh, like the driver. So that's pretty cool, I think, in my humble opinion. Now, F1, F, F1 2021, 192 frames a second versus the 3060 at 164 FPS. And Fortnite at 132 frames per second versus the 3060 at 125 frames per second. In an interview with Gamers Nexus, Tom Peterson of Intel stated that their focus of art graphics drivers is first to optimize performance in games, applications, and APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan. I mean, obviously, you, if you if you want to to have good performance in games, you need to have good performance in DirectX 12 and Vulkan. To be fair, that are most widely widely used nowadays. After that, the priority list is complete. Uh, only Intel, only then can Intel start focusing on the other games based on older APIs such as DirectX 11, DirectX 9, and OpenGL. It makes sense since Intel is fairly new to the discrete GPU game, and if they were to spend their time optimizing graphics performance for all AAA games, that would mean further delay for their 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 Alchemist graphics cards. Currently, Intel Arc's drivers only support the ACM G11 GPU, the one powering the A380 graphics card on the desktop platform. We aren't given an exact date of when these Arc graphics cards will be available to consumers, but Ryzen once, or Ryan, excuse me, why did I want to say Ryzen? <laughs> but Ryan once again reiterates that end of summer is when they will be targeting the first Arc graphics card, including the A750 Limited Edition. What we do know is that the winners of the Intel XE HPG scavenger hunt will be the one of the first to get their hands on uh, with the ARC graphics card, such as the high-end A750 and ARC A770. I really like the cooler design, by the way. It looks pretty cool. And I think like, yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. The specs for the A750 limited edition graphics card are included or er, card include a cut down ACM G10 GPU with 384 EUs, 3072 ALUs and 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory running across a 192 bit bus at 16 gigabits per second with a TGP of around 200 watts. That's really good. The graphics card is powered by an eight plus six pin connector configuration which means a maximum board power of 300 watts 150 plus 75 from the connectors and 75 power from the PCIe interface it is likely that the limited edition uh, may come in both the A770 and A750 variants it will come with three display port connectors and a single HDMI connection Intel has confirmed that the Arc Alchemist graphics card will support the newest display port 1.4a and HDMI 2.0b interfaces both the Intel Arc A750 and A750 graphics cards are expected to launch later this summer with a pricing of around $300. <sighs> oh man, okay. So that's pretty good. So the A we've talked about this before, but 192 bit bus, 200 watts, um, you know, uh, at 16 gigabytes or gigabits per second for under 300 is going to be pretty good. Um, if we compare that to uh, things that are released right now, I guess we could go with the RTX 3060. Uh, let's go ahead and grab those RTX 3060 specifications. Uh, just to make sure I, 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 I kind of have them off the top of my head. It's sometimes I just always want to make sure that I have this correct. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it'll be the same bus width as the 3060. So we can probably more than likely expect similar, if not identical mining performance on the A750 as we can expect on the, as we see on the 3060, provided there's not any other crazy things that happen along the way. And hopefully sub $300. Not too bad. We're also looking at, of course, in general, the A770, which is a 256-bit bus, and the rumored prices on that are going to be around uh, $500 for a 256-bit bus. This is going to be pretty incredible. If we compare power consumption, let's go ahead and do that. It should be pretty much, uh, pretty much almost identical Looks like 170 watts on the graphics card power uh, for the 3060 versus the current expectation of 200 watts on the A750. So there you go. That is more details on the new Arc Alchemist. We should be seeing it sometime end of summer. Obviously, there is the new releases from AMD and NVIDIA that are supposed to be in Q4, which will be after the kind of Intel release. So you want to be a little careful because we aren't sure exactly what those specifications are going to be. I think the RX 7000 series for mining might be a little bit more enticing since that new upper limit of GPUs, the high end are going up to a 384 bit bus on the 7900 and 7950 XT, presumably possibly even on the 7800 we'll have to wait and see but i think um the rx 7000 series is getting a boost the rtx 40 series from a mining perspective as far as memory intensive algorithms doesn't seem to be getting much of a boost but both lineups from amd radeon as well as from nvidia are going to see boosts on the core side of things pretty significant boosts right we're talking about up to like 2700 uh, megahertz on the nvidia side of things and over three gigahertz is uh three gigahertz on the radeon side of things and that is going to impact uh, quite a few different algorithms such as ravencoin flux caspa you know heavy hash alephium those sorts of things and it may make it significant right Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.